hello my amazing people of god and welcome back to gloria emmanuel god bless every one of you my old subscribers god bless you my year to join the family i appreciate every one of you god bless every one of you abundantly please as you're subscribing to this channel i want you to subscribe to jesus christ It is sad the church can't tell the difference between the Holy Ghost and witchcraft. Let me tell you a story about it. Uh, well, anyway, I was off in a big old basketball arena, and that we called for many, uh, people to get healed. So the whole thing was lined up with people, and we're coming down the row, and there's a tall guy over there, about four or five uh, people away, and uh, I guess discerned that he had cancer and God's going to heal him of the cancer. But three rows behind him was a little bitty granny looking girl, little granny looking woman, kind of uh, gray, blue hair, and she's praying in tongues. But instead of my spirit doing like that, it turned in like that. So I said, God, what's the deal with this? He said, oh, she's cursing you in a tongue. Uh-huh, look out now. So I leaned over there to the pastor. And I said, sir, he said, yes. I said, the little lady in the, behind the tall guy back there, she's uh, cursing us in her tongue. Now, here's what the pastor said. That's the most absurd, idiotical, idiotical thing I've ever heard. She's the head of our intercessory prayer team. So, I said, what do you want to do, God? He said, you command her to speak in English what she's speaking in this tongue. Now, I won't say it because this is a Christian group, but she said, F you and F your Jesus. Whoa! Head of the intercessor team. So the pastor turned whiter in the sheet and goes, What are we going to do? I said, Let's take her off the prayer team. <laughs> Don't you think? Yeah. Most churches in America are split because witches have infiltrated the intercessory prayer team. That's true. Most churches in America are split because witches have inter intertwined themselves in the intercessory group. See, the devil saw he couldn't stop the prayer movement, so he infiltrated it with witches. You, I said, God, I'm not telling the body of Christ that unless you give me the remedy for the run. He said, it's been before you all this time. After this manner, pray ye. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Oh, which you'll have a hard time praying that. See, if we, we better have a, a template for our prayer meetings. Okay? Here's how they overtake churches. The witches get in and then they try to get the pastor's ear. If they can't lead the pastor, then they'll turn the people against the pastor because they'll say he's unteachable. He won't listen to what God's saying. Oh, you better clean this mess up. Don't you think? I'll just give you a couple of warnings here. It's going to be dangerous for witches to come to churches like this. You'll walk in, but they'll carry you out. Okay, yeah. now we're not going to play games with you. Y'all know Bob Jones? He's watching this meeting tonight from heaven. Got the best seat in the house. Honest to God. So he and I were doing a meeting. We're back there in the green room. So we come out. Sit, sit down. As soon as I sit down, I feel strong witchcraft behind me. Lord said, you feel that? I said, yes. He said, uh, what are you going to do about it? I said, what do you want me to do about it? Now watch this. He said, I want you to get up. When you get up, take the pulpit, look them straight in the face, identify them for who they are and what they are, have them stand up and say to them, now this is a public meeting in America, have them stand up and say to them, God will give you the sunrise you've had today and two other sunrises. If you don't repent, He'll kill you. What? God will give you the sunrise He gave you today. Two other sunrises. If you don't repent, He'll kill you. Long story short, one repented and two were dead that week. God means it. He said, I don't even suffer a witch to live. We build theme parks for them, write books about them. 
I'm telling you, God is fixing to shake the church. He's going to shake, and it's going to be deadly and dangerous for witchcraft to try to operate in a church. God meant it when He said, Greater is He that's in you than He that's in the world. You, you go, well, now, Bobby, you know, um, you know, <laughs> my grandkids, they do read a little Harry Potter. Hey, that's blatant, open witchcraft. It's the most read book among children in America. Open witchcraft. You know who I blame? Mama and Papa. Daddy and Mama. Those books are what, $19, $20 a book? And listen, watch out, guys. We're at a warfare, aren't we? But the devil's under our feet if we know who we are. It's the strangest thing. Almighty God and hateful hell is asking you the same question. How could God and the devil be synchronized in what they're asking you? Here's a question both God and the devil are asking the saints of God. You ready? Who do you think you are? Hell's going, who do you think you are? And heaven's going, who do you think you are? See, as a person thinks, that's how they're going to live. If you think you're a victim, you'll live as a victim. If you think you're weak, you'll live weak. As a person thinks, that's how he's going to operate. Look at Numbers. Look at Numbers. Send them into the promised land. It's flowing with milk and honey. Remember they go, they come back with an evil report. Yeah, it's just like God said. Big fruit, but giants. And we analyzed ourselves and we looked like grasshoppers. So it gave them the ability to perceive us as grasshoppers. You better learn to be strong. You say, well, now, listen. You think there's a real war on? Oh, there is a war on. But we're fighting from victory, not for victory. Our elder brother took care of that when he strung himself up on a tree and cried, what? It's finished! Aren't you glad he didn't say, I'm finished? Well, okay. That means everything should have been done is totally done. Here's what, here's what, here's a, if we were going to ask, if you could ask me a question and say, Bobby, what do you perceive is the greatest need in the body of Christ? The presence. The presence of God. Amen. Moses, Exodus 30, 33, verse 13, 14, 15. Moses says, Oh God, if your presence doesn't go, please don't carry us anywhere. Amen. Why? Only your presence will distinguish us between all the people in the earth. The only thing that makes us unique and different is what? His presence. So it seems like that would be the ultimate thing we need is the presence of God. I love the Bible. It never asks a question without releasing an answer. Sociology and psychology raises all kind of questions and no answers. But the Bible never raises a question without releasing an answer. Show me one. He never raises a question in the Bible without releasing an answer. Here's one. Psalms 20, 24, 3 and 4. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart. So we're trying to get in the presence of God, get the presence of God in us. So it's essential that we have clean hands and a pure heart. Yeah. It's not optional. Right. It's essential. Who shall? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart. Okay? It says, we got to pursue peace and holiness. For without holiness, no individual will see the Lord. Right. No, that means that no, nobody. Pursue peace with all men and holiness. For without holiness, no individual We'll see the Lord. I don't know where we got this that it's not important about our character. We've got to be pure and clean. It's, it's, it's non-negotiable. And in 2 Corinthians 7, 1, why sure it is. It says, having therefore these promises, dearly beloved. And it says, it's like a lot of Christians, fake. <laughs> you know why? Huh? They can survive without water. You can't. You've got to have the water of life to bloom. Isn't that something? But these don't ever have to be changed either. Don't you like genuine stuff? I do. I like real things. That's what I made in my life a long time ago. I'm going to be real. I am sick of the cardboard phony. Oh, Lord. You've got to be true to yourself and true to God. The greatest thing you can do is be you, yielded to Him. I'm so tired of people trying to clone them into somebody else. You be you, yielded to Him. That's unique. That, don't you like that? Amen. The greatest thing that can happen to you is just find out God made only one of you and He wants you to be you, totally yielded to Him. It takes all the sweat out of it. 
Just be yourself. Well, now, brother, you know, I, I want to be like brother so and so, or, you know. No, just be you. Thank you for watching. If the video interests you, please share.